Happy Sunday, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Elon's Matchup Maximizer, a podcast presented by Keeping Carlson, where I, Elon Dubrovsky, take a look at next week's schedule and try to recommend players that I think may help you in your head-to-head matchups by trying to maximize your games played from players who hopefully will actually do something. We are going into week six now of most fantasy leagues, including the Keeping Carlson Ultimate Patron Fantasy League, and this week from November 13th to November 19th coming up... You know, I could work with this. We're finally not getting these weeks where, aside from the busy days, we have like two games or three games. Like, there's still three busy days. Though, looking at the schedule next week, it's like not even that bad because Tuesday and Thursday are like kind of busy, but not even that much. Like, we have nine games in each of those days. So, 18 teams playing. That's a lot of teams not playing. So, it's very possible that you may have openings on every single day except for Saturday, the busy day, where 26 teams are playing. So, you know when i'm going to reference light days and busy days in this podcast you know i could it depends if i want to call tuesday and thursday light or busy days right is 18 teams playing lighter or or busy it really doesn't matter like to try to define it because it's going to be up to you so step one you know pause this podcast right now go set your roster for the week and see what days you have openings for and then that will help determine which players that you can stream in will will actually get the games for you so yeah that with that caveat in mind let's take a look and clearly there's one team that has the best schedule of the week regardless of whether we're going to call it tuesday or thursday busy it's the anaheim ducks they play four times and three of them are on light days so tuesday if you could fit it on a tuesday you're going to get four games right but so tuesday and then wednesday friday and sunday so definitely you're going to want to take a look and see who you can get from anaheim uh, i've got a fun resource here that i'm going to start using for this podcast kevin a bear uh, has provided me with a couple percent rostered dashboard so this can help me let you know because i've been looking at yahoo percent rostered and really those numbers just aren't representative of like actual serious leagues like i'm seeing here in yahoo uh like trevor zegris is 46 percent rostered while zegris is still taken in like 100 percent of cup full divisions and especially with him now being day to day yeah i know like zegris has been like really bad this season i think we have a plan (laughs) brian and i are going to dive into him a bit on sunday uh but you know he's day to day so if he's available for you right now you can just stash him and you know why not bounce back on a week where he has a great streaming schedule right it almost makes too much sense so i don't think that zegris is going to be a two points in 12 games type of player for the rest of the season so he would definitely be my number one streaming option on anaheim if he's available going into this week but again like if i'm giving advice to people playing in the cupful then you're not going to be able to get zegris you're not going to get like minchikov troy terry mason mctavish frank vetrano they're all taken in pretty much all leagues even uh, ryan Ryan Strom is taken in a lot of leagues. I think Ryan Strom is actually someone who I have on my couple team and I'm looking to drop soon. I would probably have already dropped if it wasn't for this great schedule coming up next week. Uh, but now with Alex Killorn back in the picture, Strom has been bumped from the top power play. He's still on this line with Vetrano and McTavish, but definitely slowing down. Uh, but yeah, I guess... You know, uh, on the other hand, if Strom has been dropped in your league because he's been slowing down and he lost that top power play, again, like four games, even if he only picks up a couple of assists, that might be better than what you can get streaming in a player who will only get one or two games on your roster. So that's the whole point of this podcast. So yeah, I guess if I'm going to tell you who I like on Anaheim, I mean, I guess the one name that really jumps out. So yeah, like Zegers for sure, if he's somehow been dropped, now's a great time to jump on him and hope that the things turn around. But then, I mean, yeah, I could say like Killorn, who has been on the top line with Terry and Leo Carlson uh, with Zegers out and also on the top power play. So Killorn is is interesting. He's going to be available in a lot of leagues for you. He's only uh, rostered in 27% of Yahoo leagues, a little bit more, 91% in Kakupful leagues. I think a lot of people are also like, I've been looking at, ahead at the schedule, may have already jumped on him. And also Anaheim had the uh, Friday and, and also tomorrow. So this is actually an Anaheim recommendation on this podcast is also a Sunday savior. You, you can add a player, get that game today and get the great schedule next week so a bonus there so yeah killorn obviously would be a solid guy to grab ryan strome eh, i'm not too into him but you know take what you can get uh but yeah leo carlson is the one i have to throw out there yeah there's the risk maybe even the likelihood that he'll miss one of those games that's still a good schedule right if you could still get three games out of him that's still pretty good he's only rostered in 70 percent of cupful leagues and uh 11 of yahoo leagues carlson is coming off a hat trick against philly i mean you gotta hope it 
especially if you're adding him for next week. Hope he gets benched for this game against San Jose, though. I mean, man, that would be a pretty sweet game. He could potentially get a lot of points against the Sharks. Though if Blackwood's a net, yeah, maybe not <laughs> the way Blackwood looks in the last couple of games. But anyways, Leo Carlson would be a really sweet stream and people are frustrated, don't want to roster him because of this news that he's going to be benched every once in a while to do some load management. But, uh, you know, let you know get him and then you know on the day where he's benched then you can decide if you want to hold him for the rest of the week or not but he's a top line top power play guy when he's in the lineup so yeah he would definitely be my top pick he's probably going to be my top streaming pick of the week i still haven't really defined what like a good <laughs> metric is for that because like i said he is rostered in 70 percent of a couple leagues but only 11 percent on yahoo so i think that should qualify if you're tw- less than 20 percent on yahoo i'm gonna count it so uh, leo carlson definitely someone to go for uh and yeah that's the anaheim ducks with your top schedule then you know let me just go through the other teams that play four times next week and i gotta go to columbus next because they have some interesting players and also they play like four times and then also look at the schedules for the next you know few weeks like they have a lot of four game weeks coming up so if you've got some uh, blue jackets in your free agency that i'm about to mention then you should definitely consider taking a look and considering adding one to maybe be a hold for not only this week but a few week so with patrick line back in the lineup today if you want to look at what the lines were for columbus today in their game against detroit they had line on the top line with goudreau and boone jenner so a, a classic line from last season when those guys were healthy and then adam fantili centering a line with Voronkov and marchenko so yeah you're probably not getting a goudreau jenner or line but let's focus in on that second line because they're all doing really well fantili scored a goal today had an assist in his last game uh, you know it was a bit of a slow start to the season but i like the situation that fantili is in right now and i think as a young you know super high pedigree prospect i think he should only get better with time so he would be my top pick if you can get fantili he's you know only rostered in 26 percent of yahoo leagues seems like someone able to get oh, rostered in 91 percent of couple leagues so potentially you could even get him in a couple if you're in one of the two or three leagues where he's out there. Marchenko rostered in 96% of cupful leagues, but only 6% of Yahoo leagues. It's such a huge discrepancy here. So yeah, this is not advice for cupful, but definitely jump on Kirill Marchenko, man. I blew it. Uh, he was you know, healthy scratched for a couple of games for Columbus. I dropped him in Kakupful after spending a lot of fab to add him at the start of the season. And since then, he's had a point in every game. He's played five games, three goals, two assists, and like a lot of shots. It's a six-shot game. It's a five-shot game. So definitely jump on Kirill Marchenko. And then the third guy on that line... Uh, is a player named Dmitry Voronkov, who I was talking about a little bit in the summer. So I'm going to take a little bit of credit here. He's coming. He came over from Russia, and he's had such a great start to the year. We're looking at now six points in eight games for Voronkov. So you know, the peripherals aren't as amazing as I thought they would be. I thought he'd actually be more of like a big hitter when he came over. He's huge. Uh, but regardless, he's getting the points. He's clicking on this line. And he's also even getting uh, some power play time on the second power play so uh yeah i like all three of these guys like in that order i think i mean there could be an argument to get marchenko over fantilli especially check your roster right so uh columbus plays tuesday thursday saturday sunday so you're not fitting in the saturday you know you might not be able to fit the tuesday or thursday in which case just ignore this but it might be a situation where you could fit like a winger but not a center so yeah you definitely have to check but yeah i like all three of those guys and then also you could even take a look at some defense right uh ivan provorov has been a little bit cold lately he might have been dropped so if you have open d spots in those four days then now would be a good time i think to jump on provorov who might be available and you know he plays big minutes you know so even though he hasn't gotten a point in a couple of games he's still playing 20 plus he played 24 minutes today in the loss to detroit so i think he's definitely someone to take a look at ivan provorov Next up, let's go to the New York Islanders who have a really good schedule, especially at the start of the week. They play Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. So especially if you could fit in the Thursday game, you're getting three games in four days to start the week. Then you could always drop for the weekend since you're not going to be able to fit in your Islanders player on Saturday. Uh, The problem is they are the New York Islanders. They don't score a lot of goals. It's really hard to find a streamer to recommend. Like at this point, you know, Kyle Palmieri is in a good spot and I've brought him up on the podcast a few times today actually uh, with the Islanders losing in their in their game against the Capitals, they I, I'm seeing on game day tweets here that they shifted up their lines. They had Barzal, Horvat, and Palmieri on the top line. So Palmieri's normally been playing with Brock Nelson, but he got a bump there, and he's also been on the top power play. So Palmieri's probably been dropped in a lot of leagues since his hot start. Since yeah, he has definitely gone cold. He's now pointless in four games. 
so yeah, now's the that's the point. Yes, now's the time to go get him. I think I would definitely take him over Anders Lee at this point. Like obviously you're not going to be able to get Dobson, Horvat, Bar- Barzal, or Nelson. So yeah, Kyle Palmieri, grab him for the Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and hope for something. Like, I'm not going to make him one of my top picks just because it's it's the Islanders. They don't score a lot of goals, though. They do get Edmonton on Monday. We know how much they've been struggling to keep pucks out of their net. Then Vancouver Wednesday, Seattle Thursday. So yeah, Vancouver is obviously really hot, but uh, I think all three of those games are games where potentially the Islanders could score at least a couple goals. And yeah, Paul Mary would definitely be my pick as a streamer to look at. So he's actually the only guy I'll mention on this team. But yeah, it's a really good schedule for the Islanders. Uh, we still have four more teams that play four times next week, and I will get to them and maybe a little bit more in just a sec. You're listening to the Matchup Maximizer. All right, we are back. And next up, let's go to the Pittsburgh Penguins, who, similar to Columbus, have your classic Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. So this is definitely just going to be a team where you're going to want to take a look and see if you can fit on the Tuesday, Thursday. So I don't know. This is a tricky episode for me again, because I just don't know if these 18 games played days are days where I should be considering like good streaming days or not good streaming days. Again, you're going to have to check your roster. Pittsburgh, honestly, there's not too much to talk about because probably... Crosby, well, definitely, you know, Crosby, Carlson, Gensel, Malkin, Latang are, are taken. Probably Brian Rust is taken. Probably Riley Smith is taken. Uh, if you can get like a Riley Smith or a Brian Rust, if it's a shallow league and you could fit like a lot of those games, those are obviously guys to look at. Ricard Raquel might be available to you. He's definitely not had the start to the season that a lot of people were hoping for after last year. You know, he got bumped from the top power play. Now sitting at only three assists in 13 games. It's it's pretty brutal so far for Ricard Raquel. So he's probably available to you. And so, uh, I don't know. But should I recommend him? He's had a couple six-shot games and a seven-shot game. I mean, whatever. I don't need to recommend him. I'm, I'm pointing it out there. He's a guy that still plays on a decent line at even strength. Like he's been playing with Malkin and Riley Smith. Uh, so you can make your own decision on whether you think... Like, I think, like... You know, similar to Trevor Zegras, like maybe these guys aren't as good as what we hoped they would be when we drafted them, but that doesn't mean they're going to be like 30 point pace or lower players. Like, I still think like Raquel should be like a 50, 60 point guy for the rest of the season. So, if that's worth it to you and then for a nice schedule week, then maybe you jump on him. Uh, next up, the Seattle Kraken. Ooh, I'm excited about the Kraken. Like, they're a great team to have a good streaming schedule, and theirs is pretty good. They are similar to the Islanders, right? Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So especially if you could fit in on Thursday, then you're getting three days. And look at these teams that are playing. Colorado, we've seen Georgiev's been having trouble keeping pucks out of the net, including today in this ongoing game that's happening right now uh, as I record here at uh, 1030. What what is it right now? I'm actually the Blues are up four nothing against the Avalanche, and the Blues don't, don't even score them any goals, so that's pretty wild. Um, and my opponent in Cupful, I apologize, has a uh, Georgiev, so sorry, but I'm kind of happy about it. Uh, yeah, but anyways, back to Seattle. Right, so they play Colorado, then Edmonton, Islanders Thursday. That's usually going to be tougher than Vancouver on Saturday. Yes, yeah, Seattle just has so many players that are interesting. I actually jumped the gun, and I, I uh, for my last move of my matchup this week in Kukupful, I just went and grabbed Ellie Tolvanen because he's looking really good lately. Points in three straight going into his game today against Edmonton, which has barely started. But yeah, four points in those last three games. You look at the shots on goal in the game log, lots of threes, lots of fours lately. I'm liking what I see from Tolvanen. He's been playing on an even strength line with Yanni Gourd and Oliver Bjorkstrand. He's been playing on one of the split power plays. He's always been pretty good for scoring power play goals. So I think right there, like Tolvanen jumps out at me. Though, of course, with Seattle, there's so many players that are generally available. Like on Yahoo, you look and it's like Vince Dunn and Jared McCann and then everyone else is less than 50%. Like in, in over half the leagues, you can get a Matty Beneers who was cold for a bit, but he now also has a three-game point streak going. So obviously, if you can get Matty Beneers, I would take him above Tolvan. And Jaden Schwartz has been incredible lately. So I would also take him over Tolvan. And I just feel like at this point, again, like if, if I'm going to be recommending players and I want to look outside of Yahoo, but look at like Kupfel as an example, then, you know, you're not going to be able to get a Jaden Schwartz because how could he still be available in any leagues, right? Schwartz is available in 0% of Kukupful division. Same with McCann and Dunn. After that, though, everyone else is out there. Bjorkstrand and Matty Beneers are rostered in most of the Kukupful divisions. But yeah, Tolvanen's now up to 79. But that's just recently. So, you know, it's going to go up. I think it's going to go up to 100%. Not because of what I'm saying, but just because of this good schedule, especially to start the week. And then, yeah, 
if, if you can't get one of those people that I've just mentioned, so again, my order would definitely be of the people that might be available. Beneers, then Schwartz, then Tolvanen. Uh, but then you could also go for a Yanni Gourd, who is like, you know, not ever incredible, but decent enough. And then if you need defense, like Adam Larson had a slow start to the year, but he got a point in his last game. So who knows? Maybe that's going to be the start of Larson get, getting going. Actually, it was two assists in the win against Colorado. Obviously, we also like him for the Perifs, which haven't been as incredible this year as, you know, they were before for stretches. But I still think Larson is a solid bet and gives you a good peripheral floor. And who knows if he locks into a point or two now or then. So yeah, lots of just... Dis- decent looking options over on Seattle and yet they have a really good schedule like I guess I maybe didn't do these teams in the perfect right order because Seattle has a much better streaming schedule than Pittsburgh I was going alphabetical order there uh but yeah so definitely take a look at Seattle and if I'm going to update my streamer of the week you know what like I'm just going to get go Tolvin because I picked him and I just feel good about it last week I said that my streamer of the week was Ilya Mikhaev and he had a two goal game uh, so yeah, that's going to be my official pick for Trev to mark down, especially because also I still think Leo Carlson is not available in as many leagues as, uh, as someone like a Tolvanen. Okay. So there you go. That's my pick. A uh, couple more teams that play four times. Uh, these are two like Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday teams. So again, it's not that great if those Tuesday and Thursday are days where you don't even have room, but I think you might. So those teams are St. Louis and Vegas. And look at this. All of a sudden, St. Louis having a game. Oh, I see Colorado just scored, actually. Miko Rantanen. He's very good. Miko Rantanen. Y- you know this. You don't need me to tell you this. Um, but yeah. Oh, assisted by uh, Makar and McKinnon. Those players are also very good. But yeah, Braden Shen. A couple goals today. Uh, Shen definitely available in a lot of leagues. Not even uh, rostered in all of the couple divisions. Shen's only rostered in 64% of couple divisions. So that means that if you're listening to this and you're looking to stream a couple, Shen may be out there. He's playing on a line with Kairu, which I definitely don't hate. Kairu, Saad, and Shen has been the line today. Obviously, they're going to stick with that if they're able to pull off this win against Colorado. Also, if you look at what the top power play has been, Shen is there with Kairu, Buchnevich, Thomas, and... Who is it? I don't know. Scott Prunovich might be actually taking a look at what it's been today. So I guess I'm not going to recommend Prunovich because uh, I haven't seen him do anything, but definitely someone to potentially keep an eye on. But yeah, I guess Braden Shen becomes pretty appealing if you can fit him in again for those games. Though, of course, they are going to be playing Tampa Bay on Tuesday. That's a harder team to score against. But then San Jose on Thursday. So you may want to jump on that one. And then if you need D, I mean, he's done nothing all year until... The last three games, now all of a sudden, Tori Krug is riding a three-game point streak. Though I did just say that I saw that Perunovic was on the top power play today, but I don't know. That seems weird. We'll have to take a look and see. If you look at total time, uh, Falk and Krug have more time. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on in today's game. Most of the season, it's been Krug on the top power play. and He has a goal and an assist today, so I definitely would take a look at Krug. If you need defense, you know, if you're, let's say, full on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday for forwards, but you need D... Maybe you could wait for game day lines to give an update on what's going on with the St. Louis power play. But Krug is probably out there for you. He's only rostered in 15% of Yahoo leagues. So yeah, Braden Shen and Tori Krug could potentially be good streamers for you in the couple. Also, keep an eye out. This was a strategy that uh, was talked about on a recent short shifts where like if Joel Hofer gets either of the Tuesday or Thursday games, then St. Louis also plays Saturday, Sunday. So you might be able to get two games from Hofer. So if you see an announcement where he's getting the start again on Tuesday or Thursday, then maybe jump on him because you know you're going to also get that extra game if you have the goalie spot. Okay, the last team that plays uh, four times next week is the Vegas Golden Knights on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. The lines are a little bit in flux because Chandler Stevenson has been out of the lineup. Mark Stone has been playing with William Carrier and Michael Amadio. Uh, So is that mean that you should go and grab those guys? Honestly, I'd say probably not. Like, look, Carrier had an assist in the game against the Sharks yesterday. Um, Amadio had himself two assists. So, you know, if, but obviously those were against the Sharks and against other teams that those guys haven't been especially successful. I'd go Amadio over Carrier, but also maybe by the time we get to Tuesday, Stevenson is back in the lineup. So it's really hard to recommend a streamer. Like, I wish that I had been more into William Carlson back when he started the season strong. He's now like getting rostered in more and more leagues. He's rostered now in 70. 
66% of Yahoo leagues, all of the couple divisions, of course. Man, William Carlson just keeps on cruising. I'll definitely bring him up uh, with Brian on our mega show tomorrow. Uh, and yeah, we'll talk about, I'm sure Brian will say it's like not sustainable. Like, how could it be when he has like 18 points in 15 games? But still, like, you know, even if he regresses quite a bit, it's still looking really good, but it, it's strange because you wouldn't expect William Carlson to be getting so many points playing on a line with what Paul Cotter and Pavel Dorofiev in the last game. But hey, the numbers speak for themselves. He's been a great, if you streamed him in at one point, you've obviously been holding and just like really enjoying the production there. But yeah, it's really hard to recommend anyone else. Like honestly, like I guess you could take a look at like an Ivan Barbashev who is on the top line with Eichel and Marcia so, but still hasn't done too much with it. Only five points in 15 games. But again, on a four-game week, if you can fit him in for three of those games, maybe he gets you something. But, you know, it's becoming harder and harder to expect big stuff. Obviously, also, since I mentioned some other D, Braden McNabb is really great if you're in a bangers league. He's so good for blocks. He had three blocks in the game against San Jose. He had seven blocks in the game before that versus LA. Uh, And he even takes shots every once in a while. Like, he's not like a zero-shot guy. He's had a couple of assists in his last four games. So, yeah, if you can fit in McNabb for, like, those four games, he's definitely someone I would take. I'm a little bit disappointed pointed that I didn't grab him when I had the chance uh, for this week's matchup. Though I did get Caden Gooley on the Habs when I could have taken McNabb. And Gooley's been really good. He scored an overtime winner today. So I guess I'm not complaining too much. So I mean, I could have had both. Uh, So those are all of our four game teams this week. I guess I'll mention like Philly plays Wednesday and then Saturday, Sunday. So it's like, I guess you could jump on a Philly player on Wednesday. But even then, it's like not as fun because then you're still going to have to wait a couple of days. So, you know, it's not really a team that I would be looking to target for a stream. Edmonton goes Monday, Wednesday, so they could be pretty good. Just get the Monday, Wednesday and then drop before the last game against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Though again, Edmonton plays the Islanders on Monday, so that's a tougher team to score against. And honestly, like I, I could tell you the Edmonton lines for today's game, like the game just started. So I don't know how, even how it's going to end, but like, you know, McLeod, Ryan McLeod is on the top line right now with McDavid and Hyman and then dry sidle with Holloway and Fogel. So theoretically, if these lines stick, then Sam Gagne, I should mention with Evander Kane and Ryan Eugene Hopkins. So like I could be mentioning McLeod or Holloway or Fogel or Gagne. They're all playing with like great players. They're probably available in every single one of the leagues of people I'm talking to. Uh, but like, who knows if that'll last. But yeah, maybe you could look at the lines for Monday morning and grab, like go for the person playing with McDavid, right? Even though he hasn't been exactly the same as last season. But still, like if Ryan McLeod is still there, I guess, I don't know. You decide, okay? Uh, so yeah, those are our uh, top schedules this week. Or I guess, I guess if I'm talking about Monday, Wednesday, let's also just mention Colorado really quickly. They also play Monday, Wednesday, and then not again until Saturday. Um, Colorado is a pretty tricky team to stream from, though they're usually taken like the lines today with, uh, I should mention, Archery Lekkonen. We'll definitely talk about this on the main show. Uh, but with Lekkonen out, they were rolling uh, Nachushkin, McKinnon, and Druan, and then Ranton in with Johansson and, and Tuft, Riley Tuft. But uh, obviously it hasn't been going that well, like I said, <laughs> with St. Louis beating them. So I'm sure things will change. Maybe it's already changed like mid-game here. Uh, Jonathan Druan, if he sticks with McKinnon, obviously that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, not really a... a obvious player to jump on on Colorado here though if like you're in a shallow league and the had been dropped he's going to be getting a bigger role because also he's probably going to be getting that power play spot that Lekin had uh so okay hopefully that's been useful I've mentioned a whole bunch of names for you and yeah good luck next week I hope that uh you're able to grab someone with a good schedule and they're you're able to ride them to a victory my official pick of the week is going to be Ellie Tolvanen as someone who's not rostered in very many leagues and I'm expecting him to do really well with this great schedule that seattle has monday wednesday thursday saturday uh so yeah good luck with your streaming and i'll be back at you with a mega show with brian tomorrow then you'll get a couple short shifts on tuesday and thursday or i guess technically uh wednesday morning and, and friday morning and then uh you know right again i'll do another sh- max trip maximizer for you in a week from now so Make sure you're subscribed to Keeping Carlson to get all of this great content. Check out gamedaytweets.com to keep up to date with all the line combos so you don't stream in someone who's been bumped to the fourth line and you didn't realize it. Uh, but yeah, good luck with the streaming, and I'll talk to you tomorrow for the Mega Show. Bye.